And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Badlands. Today, today we are going to be tackling ethanol and poke shells. Hopefully a lot of poke shells. But first, we've got to get the ethanol production going. The reason we want the ethanol production going is we want the polluted dirt. And the polluted dirt will allow us to feed the poke shells. So refinement-wise, we're going to want some of these, where are they, ethanol distilleries. Now, these things are a bit interesting. They produce 500 grams of ethanol, but they produce an awful lot of polluted dirt, 333 grams per second, a, quite a chunk of carbon dioxide as well, a bunch of heat. All in all, they, they produce a lot. But we are going to put down, let's see, one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight. Eight of them. Now, I've been doing some math on these in the background. You need about 7.2 wild arbor trees to run one of them. We have 60 here, which means we should be able to run eight. Just about, give or take. Though we will have to put in some automation and transfer all that wood across. There's just, just, just no way I am doing all of that manually. Anyway, yes, these will go in over here. and then, But we're going to need some power plants to run them. And that made things a little bit trickier because what... Hmm, if we start running petroleum generators in here, which I kind of didn't want to do, but at the same time, we do have to dispose of the ethanol somehow. So I think we'll run a, a couple of petroleum generators over here to dispose of it, and we'll have to put in some sort of collecting collection pit at the bottom for all of the polluted water. All right, so we installed the petroleum generators, stuck some mesh tiles beneath them. We're also I also spread these out just a little bit so I could stick in some auto sweepers made of steel and some conveyor chute drop-offs. Now, each one of these consumes one kilo of wood per second. So one conveyor rail carrying wood should be able to sort us out. You need to be running over 20 of these to max out one rail. So we should be able to get away with just one conveyor rail bringing the wood over. So while our dupes are busy doing all of that, I need to figure out how we are going to get all of that over from there to, well, all the wood from over here to over there. Oh, and while that's going on, let's have a quick review of some other junk they could put in in the background. Uh, there's a lot of suggestions in the comments to take the salt that this is producing because the, yeah, there's going to be a lot of salt here. Every time the, the water comes in here, it just gets zapped into salt. We can grind up that salt in here. Where is it? Come on. Granite sand. No. Ah, salt to table salt. If you turn salt into table salt, you get, you produce, well, you take 100 kilos of salt and you turn it into 100 kilos of sand. And we do need sand on this map. So, if you'll notice, we now have 37 tons of sand just from grinding up salt. It's amazing. There's also loads of salt on the map. As well as that, I stuck in a little bit of a timer here. This only turns on once every, like for 60 seconds, once every 10 cycles, and it just dumps a whole lot of salt across into this storage bin. It's pretty fast. Uh, this thing can move about, I think it's 500 kilos a second, so... Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, we'll leave that there for the time being, though. I do have a conveyor rail set up now. All of the salt and table salt gets shipped across this line, goes all the way around here, and gets dumped off here at our ceramic production, well, our clay production. And I also have the table salt getting sent back over to over here, just so that it's uh, closer to the dining areas. Everyone's got table salt now. Do they need it? No, but hell, we've, we're making it, so why not use it? Anyway, with all of that covered, let's go and put ourselves in some shipping for this. We want to get some shipping rails in here and a bunch of uh, conveyor loaders to take all of this wood and dump it where we need it to go. All right, that's what it's going to look like. Each one of these can cover about three trees. That means I need one of these for every three, and there was, well, I was just a little bit short. That one only covers the last two. Then I was trying to think about if we could maybe find some way to squeeze them up in between the trees, the way you do with uh, sleet wheat. When you're dealing with sleet wheat, you can sometimes do that. But even then, uh, I probably could, but I don't want to... I, I mean, I can't quite get the corner piece there, and then if I move it to the side... I just I couldn't find anywhere where it was convenient without messing things up. And then if you push it up too far, you've started cutting off branches at that point, and it just... No, no. I'd rather just throw power and resources at the problem. We'll whisk all the wood out of here. It'll all get sent across on this conveyor rails. So all of them will merge into one conveyor rail at the end. We'll have that zoom all the way across here and come down. And then for splitting purposes, we're not even trying to be smart about this. We are going with the most brute force dumb solution that's possible. The moment the wood gets to here, it'll split in a 50-50 manner. When you have one of these green bridges, yeah, everything gets sent 50-50. Or you could split it up into three or four if you really need to go that far. But 50-50 split. Uh, this comes down here, and then we've got another split here. So 50% of 50% will go here, and the other 25% will go over there. So you get 25% of the wood is going to go here, 25% here, same across the top. Four-way even split. We don't need to have any storage bins. We don't need to do anything like that at all. Should just be simple 
easy, not a brother. Uh, at the same time, I do have a bunch of wood I think I've stockpiled over here at some point. I'm going to have to add that into the system, but for now, I'm not going to worry about that. I need to plug all of this into power. Uh, Power-wise, I don't really want to run heavy watt joint plate through heavy watt wire through there, but um, no, I think we'll just use one one large transformer and we'll just run power from that through the whole area. And that is the guts of getting the wood over there. Well, we haven't quite finished off over this section, but before we start all of that, there is probably a few things we should take care of. These things are going to introduce an awful lot of complications to our sauna. For one thing, we're going to end up with carbon dioxide in here. Well, also the petroleum generators are going to do this as well, but carbon dioxide and polluted dirt are going to start showing up in large quantities in here. That's something we're going to have to deal with. So we need to deal with the ethanol, the polluted dirt, the carbon dioxide. The heat is not a problem. First off though, the ethanol it produces itself. That is fairly simple. We have plenty of ceramics. Uh, the reason we're using ceramics is this, mm, this ethanol is going to come out at pretty close to its boiling point. And because it's close to its boiling point, we don't want to let it boil. That would be bad. Uh, so we're just going to immediately run that over here and right into that uh, petroleum generator. Then we'll do the same thing, but out across the top. We'll get these four here. What am I doing trying to be smart about it? All we have to do is just run one pipe. This is only going to produce about four kilos of liquid, so we can just yeah run them like that. It will be grand. So all of them will run along through there. Oh, I had put in a door here to stop passage through. This is I'm going to control access in and out of here because I'm going to have to dump all the excess wood I have lying around the map, all the wood I've been generating for the last God knows how long. I want to get that in here as well and just have it all dumped in this section ready to go, which is why I have not turned these on. Uh, oh yeah, next up it is the, the carbon dioxide that comes off of this. Now, I'm not going to use any door crushers. I'm not a big fan of those. So hmm, how are we going to get rid of all that CO2? Well, my traditional solution, pump it up to space. Looking at the carbon dioxide production, that's going to produce about 1.33 kilos of carbon dioxide, which means we're going to need about three gas pumps to take care of that safely. But then we're also going to be running both of these flat out. So that's four, three, it did take one apiece. So that's five. I'm going to need five gas pumps, which means I'm going to need two and a half gas pipes. So three gas pipes. Oh my God. Uh, I should probably point out something here. We're not running this for the power. I know that seems crazy, but what we're actually running this for is we want the polluted dirt. So we don't ever want to stop these. We want these to be running flat out. We're not going to do any power control. We're just going to have both of these petroleum generators running flat out with ethanol being pumped into them by these. And that's it. We're just going to let it run forever. Assuming the trees just keep producing wood and we harvest it in a timely fashion, it should never stop. And we get lots of polluted dirt. Uh, but we're going to have to do so much more. Uh, as well as that, we're going to have to place a siphon. These are going to produce polluted water. So the petroleum generators here, they are going to kick out, well, the carbon dioxide, which we've already planned for. We're putting in five gas pumps, but they also produce 750 grams of polluted water. Two of them sits one and a half kilos of water. We need to get one of these, put up a pressure sensor, and then once the pressure in here gets above a certain amount, some of the water gets siphoned off and probably dumped into our main storage tank. Oh, God. All of this just so we can get some polluted dirt. Ah, the joys of the game. Which reminds me, if we're going to get the polluted dirt out of here, we're going to have to run even more conveyor rails. Do I even have space anymore? Uh, I've got too many conveyor rails running everywhere. No, 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 we can manage this. We'll just uh, run that out the bottom somehow. No, we can, we can run it across the top and then have it hop across somewhere. We'll probably put our poke shell ranch somewhere over here. You know what, let's just put in the, the removal first and we'll worry about the poke shell ranch location in a minute. There, that should, yeah, that should allow us to whisk out all of the polluted dirt. Off-gassing wise, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out. The pressure in here is above 1.8 kilos. So in theory, the polluted dirt should not off-gas in here. However, you have the same problem with, where is it, algae distilleries? Last I checked, when you use those, even though there's slime inside, the slime inside the algae distilleries would still off-gas a little bit, even if the pressure around it was too. Oh, and I made those out of gold. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, one second there. All right, well, that is all going on. Let's maybe start up our, our wood movement. I want to start that wood moving over there now. There's going to be an awful backlog, and I'd like to get it taken care of. Uh, for preventing overloads on the wire. Well, I know I've got everything hooked up to one wire, so in theory... Yeah, five kilowatts. That could be a problem. However, we've been sneaky and we've put them all on the same rail. All of these are on the same rail. So what should happen? Hmm, actually, you know what we could do that might be even sneakier? 
No, 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 this is good enough. This is good enough. We'll just set these up to start uh, loading wood now. Right, with that set up, all of those start loading. Now, if you'll notice... Actually, we'll just do it the whole way back. If you check, it's only loading up at the far end. The reason it's only loading up at the far end is because the shipping rail is passing through the conveyor loaders. This way we can limit how much power draw we get. Is it perfect? No. Maybe get the occasional overload? Highly unlikely, but it, it could theoretically happen. Uh, it just it would require the, the wood to be harvested in an awkward manner where suddenly all of them turn on all at once, say, like that. That's probably not good, but that only takes a second and then, yeah, it's now all, the line is all clogged up with wood. So only the ones at the very end can activate. And once they've cleared out all the wood here, they will stop and then it will go to the next section and the next and then the next. It's a pretty straightforward and uh, simple system. Now, we'll get all of those to there as well. Boom. And that should have all our wood heading over. Jesus. I have never made this many shipping rails so early. Ah, and look at it, all spreading out and lining out perfectly. 50-50 splits everywhere, and everyone's getting dosed up with wood. Though I have not plugged in the power yet. I don't want to turn this on until we've made ourselves capable of dealing with all the waste products. Uh, next waste product to deal with would be the gas. We're going to need to filter out the carbon dioxide, and we're going to put in carbon dioxide sensors, sensors up to a certain level. Now, I've been thinking about that, and the wood we're bringing in is going to be... Well, uh, what is it? 22 degrees? We're putting in a lot of wood here, and that's... Well... That's going to soak a lot of heat out of our industrial brick, or industrial sauna. So I was thinking we should maybe layer the bottom of this entire thing up to about here in carbon dioxide. There. We're going to put a gas sensor there, and a gas sensor there, and all our gas pumps beneath it. If there's carbon dioxide up to this level and carbon dioxide up to there, then it will turn on these six gas pumps, and these six gas pumps will pump the gases out. But the only way there should be carbon dioxide up to that point is if this entire area is full of it. Meaning the entire bottom layer will be covered in carbon dioxide. Will it work? Probably. You know what? I could put slicksters down here. I could run a couple of slickster ranches down here and start ranching slicksters to consume the carbon dioxide. I don't know how many it would take. We do have a lot of ranchers. We could probably do it. You know what? Leave it up to the commons. It, we'll see if there's enough people who are up for me throwing in a, a quick slickster ranch down here. Well, relatively quick slickster ranch to try and uh, deal with the carbon dioxide. I mean, we are going very ranch heavy. Hell, we've just started going ranch heavy. Uh, uh, these gas pumps, though, we need to hook them up to some gas pipes that go up to space. Oh yeah, and if you're thinking about this, that's this is going to be five gas pumps that are running flat out. And if you... Where is it? Where's the power section? That's 240, say 1.5 kilowatts, because we're running five gas pumps. So 1.5 kilowatts, plus we're going to have uh, to pay the power on all of these distilleries, which is another 1, 2 kilowatts? So to 3.5 kilowatts, it's going to cost us 3.5 kilowatts to run all of this. These are only going to generate four. <laughs> Unless we uh, we put in some sort of, you know, booster pack on them or the, the NG's tune-up. This, this whole thing doesn't really produce an awful lot of energy. Think about the amount of effort we're going through. These things are not really designed to produce energy. That's why I've never really got into them before. They're designed to produce polluted dirt. That's their whole purpose. Oh, you could also say they're designed to produce a lot of carbon dioxide, so you could feed a whole army of slicksters if you so wanted. But realistically, this is to produce an awful lot of polluted dirt, with a tiny little bit of power left over. Now try and imagine doing this without using wild arbor trees. Then it's also going to cost you water. At that point, uh, you know what? Let's just start running these gas pipes. I hmm, We're going to have to run them up to here somewhere. And I don't want to run them too close to the center. I'm probably going to end up he heating up the center of the map quite a bit when I do this. Do you like gas pipes? Because this is how you get gas pipes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to run a whole bunch of, well, three gas pipes all the way from down there up to the top of the map. I think our dislocated pod location worked out for us there. That actually cut down on the amount of distance we had to travel. Well, that's going to take a while. They're all insulated and they're made of mafic rock. Uh, insulated mafic rock for gas pipes is the best you can get. What's the insulation on this? Thermal conductivity 0 0.031. It's still going to leak some heat, though. There's no real way we can avoid that, unfortunately. But, hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now, power-wise, we should probably hook those up. Also, ooh, is the automation in place? Ah, yes, it is. Perfect. We will set these to carbon dioxide only. Right, so they should only turn on when carbon dioxide is detected, but for the time being, I'm not going to hook up the power on those. I mean, I'll bring over the wire, but I'm not going to hook it up the whole way just yet. Uh, you know what, I'll bring it along the bottom. Wait, just to there. Just in case they should accidentally turn on, I want to, don't want to dump a bunch of steam through them. Okay, once 
the carbon dioxide is dealt with, that still leaves us with the, okay, so yeah, I still need a place for the polluted dirt. We still need a place for the water. We need some way of siphoning the water out, but mm, what's the pressure in here? Actually, it's below 20 kilos. I think we'll let the water pressure in here build up to 20 kilos and then start siphoning it out. So mm, let's just grab one of these at random, say this one, and let's hook up a sensor to it. Actually, on second thoughts, playing around with one this tied up in piping, not a fun plan. Let's let's make it easy on ourselves and maybe work with this one over here. It should be easy to siphon off two kilos of water from this sucker. Easy peasy. All that happens is if this sensor here detects that there is more than 20 kilos of liquid pressure in here, if it goes above that, 20 kilos of gas pressure is to say, at that point that means there's too much steam in here. So what it will do is it will activate this liquid shutoff and that liquid shutoff there will allow the two kilos of water coming out of the steam turbine to go up here and across and get dumped into our liquid tank over here, our clean liquid tank. Simple, efficient. Uh, at the same time as this over here, this uh, this Mafic rock, I mentioned this is the best insulated gas pipe you can get. Well, I, I should have mentioned this, but I'm excluding ceramic, of course, and insulated pipes made of insulation. So it's just of the, the basic rock types you can get for running really, really long pipe, runnings, pipe runs, because in all fairness, that is three hugely long pipe runs going all the way to space. You wouldn't really be using ceramic for that. That's just way too expensive. Even with all of the work I put in to make ceramic, I could not produce enough ceramic to do that already. Now, uh, over here, have we already stripped out most of the wood? Yes, we have stripped it all the way to the end. Once all of this wood is stripped out, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of activation here to get the rest of the wood around the map and dumped in there. I want to have a, a massive stockpile of wood before we even think about starting these up. Okay, so that's the water waste products from this taken care of. The carbon dioxide from all of these will be taken care of by these gas pumps. That just leaves the polluted dirt. Um, why are those showing power? Oh yeah, I haven't plugged those in yet. So we need the polluted dirt to go to our poke shell ranch. Now, where are we going to put that? I want it relatively close by. Say, hmm, maybe about here, we think. So this is going to be my attempt at a poke shell ranch. Now, there is some automation stuff that will still have to go in. We're going to have to, of course, remove all the poke shell eggs and stuff like that. But the general theme is we get all of the polluted dirt that's going to be coming out of here and we split it off and dump it into these two pits. Then we have the poke shells in here. The poke shells can eat the polluted dirt out of the pits. Pits. Wow, that's that's a terrible description for it. But anyway, yes, uh, these uh, little the crude oil here should stop the polluted dirt from off-gassing. As long as there's more than about two, well, 1.8 kilos of liquid in there, it'll stop the polluted dirt from off-gassing. We shouldn't have to worry about that, you know, just evaporating off into space, into the air and being wasted. How many can we run? Well, this is where it gets annoying. The numbers on this are never even. They're just an annoying amount. For example, if you run, say, four ethanol distilleries, you can support 5.7 poke shells. Five, sorry, 5.714 poke shells. We're running enough uh, ethanol distilleries that we can support 11.42. So, say, yeah, I'm going to put six in each one. We are going to put six poke shells in each of these. That's going to be the plan. Then, that case, I sort of made these ranches just a little bit too big, but I am not going to worry about it. This is where all the main ranching will be done. Now, we are going to do a little bit of starvation ranching where we uh, run some of the eggs, same way we're doing, say, with these suckers here almost. They, we're not actually feeding them. But with the starvation ranching, we should be able to squeeze one egg out of them. We've done it before with, uh, what do you call them, shovels. Shovel starvation ranching is also a thing. But for this case, we want to get as much lime as possible. You might have noticed in this place we have been burning off a lot of steel here and there, just running huge wires made out of steel and stuff made out of steel. Reason being is I want to convert all of the iron on this map into steel. And yeah, I, I just, I want to ranch that many poke shells that we can turn every single scrap of iron on this map into steel. We currently have 366 tons of iron and there's way more to be had. I want to get it up to at least 500 tons of steel at some point. Well, it, it's always good to have gold. Anyway, uh, I need to go around and take care of the last of the things that are being done. The gas piping should be finished. Excellent. The wood over here, I don't think that's quite finished yet. No, there's still some wood being shipped out. But once the last of the wood is all shipped over, what I'll want to start doing is uh, getting the last of the wood in. At that point, I think we can start turning this on. Uh, I'll be interested to see how these poke shells work out. Oh, and we're going to need some poke shell incubators as well, are we not? Yeah, I think we'll stick in some poke shell incubators right over here. And what I might do is put down some glass tiles so that it can leach some cooling out of our main base. How is our main base looking on cooling? Oh, beautiful. It's all down to a nice balmy 30 degrees, except right about there. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's some 200 degree igneous rock, 24 tons of it sitting in the middle of my base. But our cooling solution is just good enough that it, it's not killing us. Uh, I could probably put it in a few radiant pipe segments. Do I need it? I could, but... Mm. You know, I'll put in a few radiant pipe segments here just to bleed out the last of the heat. A few radiant pipe segments there should help bleed out a little bit more, uh, bleed out a little bit more heat out of this area. Though I don't think it matters too much. We're we're dumping all of this rock into the the hatches, and the hatches don't care. They just eat it, and whatever they they poop at will just be cool at their body temperature. I also put in this here. This allows uh, this auto sweeper is able to grab rocks out of here and fill all the surrounding storage bins, which is three of them. It cuts down on the load on this conveyor loader because the conveyor loader was just flat out and could not keep up. This way, the conveyor loader only has to feed three ranches as opposed to the original six. Um, down here, I had messed this up. These doors were actually a little bit closer. They were in here, which meant this ranch was overcrowded and all the... The, the reproduction rates and all of these was through the floor, which was hurting our barbecue production, which might explain why I was having like those, my food was fluctuating quite a bit. Anyway, are we almost ready? I'm just going to check in on the last few things and we should, we might almost be ready to turn this on. To prepare for all of this, I'm trying to get rid of the last of the lumber out of this area. So um, what I have been doing is I set up a couple of drop-offs for the over here. And those drop-offs are set to pick up all the lumber. And then I just banned everyone from going into these locations. We now should have all the lumber right on that spot. Where is it? There's a lot of lumber. There's an awful lot of lumber. How much lumber have we got in total on the map? We got 240,200 pieces of lumber. I think, though, we finally got it all. Yeah. Uh, Salt-wise. Oh. Damn it, I've been doing this wrong. I should be locking that door. How are you getting... Mm. No one's not in right anymore. No, no more opening. Okay, they can still get in and out even when I deny them permissions. Right, that is... Uh, well, that's bad. Let's try locking it, see if that makes a difference. Right, once I lock it, they can't get through. Okay, that is much better. This is the reason I set up this whole uh, system here. It only activates once every 10 cycles and it takes all the salt and dumps it into that storage container. I just didn't want my dupes coming along every five seconds to try and activate this the moment enough salt was uh, around. I want them to do it in batches. Just saves a bit of time. Anyway, over here, I think we are... I think we're done. We can get rid of these uh, city dispensers. From now on, all the wood should be automatically sent over, and I'm not going to have any storage places for them anymore. Uh, in fact, I think we're going to get rid of wood as one of the things that can get swept up here. This little section here has been where I've been sweeping things. It's just my... I normally get up a sweeping station at some point. I just made one a little bit earlier on this map just due to the sheer quantity of stuff that was everywhere. I also did a massive sweep all across the map to uh, make sure that our hatches will never run out of food anytime soon. But I think we are finally ready to fire this sucker up. Uh, how, how much wood are we looking at here? They should all be just about even. 33, 1, 2, 0, 34. Oh, that's not even. Uh, 34, 2 and 34, 5. You know what? It is close enough considering how much time and effort went into these. So let's put that there. These doors that are in here, there's a... You can barely see them there with this pneumatic doors. I've Set it so that no one can get in. So now it should be completely automated. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Yeah. So the ethanol comes out at 75 or so. And then, yeah, by the time it gets to the end, we're just about good. Damn it. Can I actually get a reading on the ethanol? Damn it. I should really look it up. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure the ethanol is close to its boiling point there. If we go find some ethanol. Ah, here we are. Perfect. Ethanol here, vaporization point 78.4. And it's coming out at ooh, 74, 76 in places. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. That just dumps straight in there. We get our polluted water, which is instantly vaporizing, which is excellent. I think... I think that's the start of it. Right. Uh, I'm not going to hook these up just yet. We're going to wait until we have a decent collection of carbon dioxide. Uh, polluted dirt-wise, where is that going? Has it already started? Yeah. Uh, Oh, did I not finish those? I didn't. There goes some of the polluted dirt. Um, I thought I'd finish those. Did I? Seems like it's finished. I can't. Ah, oh, damn it. I'm going to have to let people in there now. Well, it's fine. I knew that was a, a possibility. We've nothing that's uh, going to try and take any resources out of here anyway. Right, with that hooked up, the polluted dirt is heading across the wire. Now, I'm pretty sure... Some of this is going to off-gas along the way. No, oxygen pressure here is pretty high. Though I think what we'll do is we'll make a few extra tiles here. We'll tile those in. 
the more tiled space it goes through, the less likely it, or it just can't off gas when it's going through tiled space. You know what? We might just move this whole thing up a little bit so it passes through there. We can brick in a few more spaces and make sure that there's a, you know what? That's fine. We'll just do it that way. Boom. More of it's bricked in. Less spaces for it to potentially off gas, which just saves us time and effort. We'll, we might have to deal with that later. Okay, and I think we're golden. Time to start getting some poke shells in here and start ranching them. We have, I think we will start with one. We have lots of poke shells down here, but we'll grab a young one and transfer them across. Right, we managed to find one that's six. That's the perfect because at that age, they've just hit the point where they can start uh, laying eggs. Right, and we'll make sure no one else can get back in there. Yeah, perfect. Uh, they're just at the point where they can start laying eggs. That means they've got a nice long life cycle ahead of them. Now, they're in here. This is a, a normal, just standard issue ranch. 96 tiles and 96 tiles for both of these. We're going to run each one of these to, say, six critters. We can support 11 and a half, so you know what? I am going to try and run 12. Maybe some of them will starve a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Are they fed? Yeah, we're going to have to wait until the wildness goes out of them. Four incubators. The way this will work is as follows. We are going to ranch a whole bunch of these, and then we're going to have some uh, starvation ranches going about. You know what? Let's start putting together those starvation ranches. I cleared out a little bit of extra space earlier on. Right here is all of the ranches. Uh, so I put in, well, not all of them. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten ranches, each one capable of supporting eight poke shells. That way we can starvation ranch about 80 of them in here. And then we've got these two here, which will support another 12, bringing us up to about 92. However, that's not quite enough. I want to I want to go hit the 100 mark at least, because we're going to be running four incubators. But four incubators, it takes... Well, are you tamed yet? Please tell me you're being tamed. You're tamed. Uh, age reproduction. Ah, yes, you have been tamed. They produce one egg every six cycles. It says 17%, but it, there's actually a little bit of a rounding error that, going on there. But um, yeah, it's about once every six cycles. They take about 20 cycles to hatch the eggs. But, or yeah, if we put them through here, it only takes four cycles to hatch them. So since that's the case, uh, can we copy the settings? No, we cannot. Never mind. We'll incubate, 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 and incubate some more. That means each one of these can support, is it 25? Yes, it's 25. Uh, it's six. So if they can hatch an egg in four cycles, assuming you stick in another egg immediately afterwards, that means you can run about 25 poke shells per incubator. Uh, so 100 poke shells out of four incubators. That's the plan. Uh, I should also put in some cooling there. They're going to give off an awful lot of heat. Uh, we could put in some automation to only turn them on briefly so we uh, save ourselves a bunch of electricity, but... Nah, that's that, that's not that's not what in the spirit of the game. The spirit of the game is you pay the costs. You know, we, we want to get the, the benefits out of these incubators. I am going to pay the full power costs. Otherwise, I'd feel like I was uh, I was I was cheating the game out of uh, out of the effort. Now that should cover most of that. Oh no, yeah, we need a couple of more ranches, don't we? I think so. We've got about eighty this side. Uh, we put a couple more back here. Hmm, you know what? Yeah, we'll put a couple more back on this side just to just to finish to round it out and. Two more ranches installed. What are we up to now? Uh, 12? 80, 96. That's 96 plus whatever will be in there. We should be able to support the even 100. However, we do need somewhere to whisk all the eggs out of. We can't have any of the eggs staying in here. If the eggs stay in here, any of the ranchers that are in there with the eggs will get clattered. The moment an egg drops, they'll just get swarmed by all of the poke shells. So we need to put in a bunch of automation, which is where these come in. I forgot to put a few of those in there, and those two are the main ones. Now we're going to need to have some sort of drop-off where we store all the eggs in between, and oh yeah, there's going to be several little bits of just uh, quirks of dealing with these things. Uh, we'll wall these suckers in also. Why we wall those in will become apparent later as this starts to progress further and further, but what I do need to do is make sure I have somewhere to shove those eggs soon, really soon, because that thing's probably going to drop an egg in not too long. 46%. Oh yeah, we got about three cycles. No, we got time for this. First, let me crank out some more research. I'm just going through all the research and getting rid of a lot of it. At this point, there's no reason not to. We have plenty of time and space. While we're waiting for this egg, this critter to drop its first egg, let's just have a quick go over the plan. Uh, the plan will be, this will get groomed, it will drop eggs. Those eggs will immediately get picked up by this auto sweeper. The auto sweeper is going to dump all of the eggs, and you know what, we don't just want to dump the eggs, we also want to dump the poke shell molts. Uh, the reason there's two poke shell molts is there's the baby poke shell molt and there's the adult poke shell molt. Both of those will all be dumped onto this and the eggs with them. All of them will be whisked across here and dumped into this area here. This is going to be poke shell egg storage, molt storage, everything storage. They'll all get dumped in here. Now, of course, there will be live 
like the eggs that will get dropped down here, some of them are going to hatch, well, quite a few of them. And when they do hatch, we're going to have live poke shells in the middle of a bunch of eggs, so they will be aggressive, which is why the ladder segments are up here. The dupes can stand on the ladders, reach down and pick up the eggs, and then run out again. They don't actually stand down here, and as far as I'm aware, though, I haven't tested this extensively yet, they can't get hit by poke shells while they're up here two tiles above them. So they should be able to pull out anything they want out of here to fill up the incubators. And we've also done rails to all of them. So, yes, those eggs will get whisked out, put into the incubators. The incubators will incubate them up, and then any fresh poke shells will get dumped in here until these are full. Now, both, once both of these hit tw six apiece, no more of them will go in there. You'll see that they're set to priority seven. These are set to priority six. So once these two are full, all the poke shells will start getting dumped in here and filling these up. Now, there's no food in here, so they will starve. However... Due to the mechanics of the game, they start with enough calories when they're born that you can, if you groom them and take care of them, they will lay one egg before they run out of calories. Once they run out of calories, they won't have the energy to, to drop an egg, but you will get one egg out of them before they run out of calories. You can do the same thing with shovels and hatches and a few other critters. So that way, we can get a self-sustaining population. So any eggs they lay will also get whisked down here. And because these things are getting uh, are being groomed, their metabolisms will be quite high and they'll actually die out usually about, I'm going to say about 30 cycles old, at which point they drop their adult molt, which also gets whisked across here and dumped down into this section. Now I'm going to have to move all of the molts out of there at some point, but for now, this is just what we've started with. And that drop an egg, I believe it did drop one, did it? Where'd the egg go? Where'd it go? Did someone grab the egg already? What did I miss? It definitely dropped an egg. Can you reach it? Okay, somehow there's an egg around here and it's gone missing. Hmm. Oh, I know what's going on. God damn it. I have a drop-off set to grab all the eggs and drop them down in a corner. It's over here. So this is set up to sweep all critter eggs that are pincher roll. Oops. Yeah, so that means that egg down there, where is it? There's an egg in here? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Oops, that's where the egg ended up. I need to get that egg out of there and into an incubator, so I'm going to have to allow dupes in there. Well, this is going to be interesting because, yeah, those uh, those poke shells are not very happy. Hopefully, well, this should be a demonstration. You should be able to run down there, grab the egg, and they're gone. And uh, the poke shells never even noticed they were there. Boom, problem solved. But in future, the general theme will be this uh, This conveyor will sweep it into that section and then we can pull the eggs out of there to fill the incubators as needs be. One of the good things about this as well is a poke shell egg can sit there, sit there for as many cycles as it wants, say 20 cycles. But at any point, if someone, if one of these needs an egg, your dupes can come along and pick one up and they might pick one up that's already been there five or even 10 cycles, having the incubation time, meaning you get uh, the poke shells out faster. I have no idea how much lime this could theoretically produce. Um, well, okay, I have some rough numbers in my head, but I don't want to say anything out loud until we actually get it working. I want to see what it works out at. For the time being, this is pretty underwhelming. We've only got one poke shell egg, one poke shell in there. So to speed things along, I just grabbed all the wild poke shells I had lying around and threw them in there. Five of them. That should help speed things along. Otherwise, it was going to take forever to get up to speed. While that's going on, let's go get our hands on some more iron ore. Reason being, I'm running out. I'm actually running out of iron ore. Uh, it's all these conveyor rails. This is probably the most conveyor rails I've ever built this fast. I mean, okay, not relatively fast. It's just there's so much conveyor rails everywhere, just putting resources all across the map. I still need to run a bunch from through the, uh, the poke shell ranches. I should also brick them in. I'm thinking, you know what? Let's use plastic. Plastic increases speed, and we have so much plastic. We have 478 tons of the stuff. And we might as well take advantage of that run speed bonus. That should... Well, okay, it'll make the place look a little bit nicer as well. I believe plastic is, gives decent... De well, actually, no. It doesn't give any decor, does it? Oh, okay. Never mind, but the run speed bonus will at least be appreciated. I don't normally use plastic, but considering that our, uh, our plastic production is so ludicrous... Why not just use plastic tiles everywhere? I would prefer actually to use metal in a lot of instances just for the decor bonus, but I thought on this map it would be kind of interesting to go with plastic. Now back here, our uh, industrial sauna is looking a little bit steamy. Let's uh, hook up the gas pumps. That is activated because the two gas sensors here are detecting carbon dioxide, and since both of them are detecting carbon dioxide, they've pitched... But, ah, switch this on so it's now getting a uh, they're all getting sucked out which is perfect that should keep the pressure nice and even whoa what's going on over here okay ah 
This has not gone above temperature. We need to be running more resources through this. Otherwise, this is not going to hit the required temperature to turn on. This needs to hit 140 C before it turns on. So what's happening is the steam is not being siphoned out of here. I need more heat in here. Damn it. Hmm. Let me think about this. So a simple enough solution to this was over here. This aqua tuner is, tends to turn on and dump a bunch of heat into the area, which means this steam turbines gets a lot more use than all the others. I just did a little bit of jerry-rigging with the pipes, and now anytime this activates, if there's more than 20k of pressure in here, 20 kilos of pressure, it will siphon its water off and send it over towards our recycling tank. That should hopefully help stop that problem. Now, how are we looking over here? We're still at 5 of 6. We've got 2 pincher row eggs going on. I think in uh, in about 100 cycles or so, actually probably about 40 or 50, we should have most of these filled. I must say I'm very much looking forward to seeing how many we can ranch. This has been sort of on the cards for a while. Ever since I mentioned that I wanted to turn all the iron into steel, I knew I wanted to do a lot of poke shells. That is why you will notice we have the last four hires were all plus seven ranchers. We have got a lot of ranchers going on. There's four there. We've got a fifth over there, a sixth, a seventh. We have seven ranchers. Each one should be capable of supporting 32 critters. And we have a lot of critters going on. We've got uh, eight, 16, 32. So that's one rancher, eight, 16, uh, 24. Then another one over here. That's 32. So that's another rancher. And another one for this rancher. You know what? There's a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ranching ranchers required and we have enough ranchers that we should be able to handle this. Uh, power wise, this all seems to be working out. Let's have a quick look at our power grid. Energy wise, beautiful. These are these emergency, gener our emergency generators haven't kicked in. Oh, that reminds me. How is this looking over here? This volcano is about to go into dormancy in about 10 cycles. So we're going to be getting no magma in there for quite some time. I think we're drawing it out at a slow enough rate. The way these things work is I want them to run continuously, nonstop. I just want them to be a constant source of power. I don't want an on off switch. I just want consistency. That's all. That's sort of what I'm after. Hey, isn't that what we're all after, I suppose, is consistency? <laughs> but, uh, this means this whole thing just should run continuously, but there's no real way to work it out. I mean, I could start choosing math and trying to figure out how much uh, magma erupts, how much heat it would generate in theory, and then how much we should drain out of it. But there's uh, there's heat loss here and there, depending on the mechanics used. And I just eyeball it. So what I've done is I've set this to 190 for now. If when we come back and this is going dormant next time, this is at a higher level, I'll just crank up the temperature a bit because I know I can squeeze more out of it. We have another one over here. Where is it? Oh, Wow. This map is starting to get a bit chuggish. I might want to do a big sweep again. Uh, this one over here seems to be going into dormancy shortly. Next dormancy, 15.5 cycles. Ooh, I don't know. We might not have enough magma to keep that running, but it is our water filtration system. We're losing a little bit of the, the heat out of this because of the salt that's in it. Though, if you look at the salt here, you know, it doesn't come out that hot. Well, it wasn't originally. Uh, and where was the last one? The last one was down here. This one, I was about to turn it on when I realized I'd made a mistake. The mistake was... I left it an automation wire, the one hooked up to the magma door. So now I have to break back in here and put in that uh, wire. So I'm going to vacuum out this whole area, walk in here and rebuild those two, uh, those wire segments. Then seal the whole thing back up again and get out of there. <laughs> Just uh, choice of the game. While we're in here fixing that, I thought I'd add in a second temperature shift plate. Just to dump temperature into the door, which should mean, you know what? Let's extend that on a bit there as well. I want to see if we can't just rip a little bit more temperature out of the, the doors and get a more even flow. Uh, it's an experiment. If things go horribly wrong, I can always uh, turn it off again. All right, let's turn this on. Uh, above 300? No, nah, below 300. There we go. Perfect. No, it's still catching the rock, so it doesn't seem like that temperature shift plate had any negative effects. What's you at? Still hasn't caught up. Automation wire-wise, what are we on here? I think I left this at a second, did I? Two seconds, perfect. Okay, then after that, we want to set this to if the temperature is above 160, you stop. Perfect. And that's more power for the grid. Yeah, that's what I like about this. Consistent power from all the geothermal. Otherwise, geothermal is one of those ones where you can end up drawing too much and running out, or not drawing enough when you need it, or not being able to ramp up in time. Just, I uh, like a consistent power output, and as long as you spread out your scheduling right, kind of evens everything out. Now, let's have one last look back at our poke shells before we head off for the day, shall we? And see how we're doing. Ah, one baby's already there. We got four poke shell eggs in the, in the incubators. 
Quick jump forward in time, and we're up to six critters here, six critters here, four in the incubators, though we have none quite waiting in this section. I put in some doors here. This way my uh, my dupes don't have to go in there. They can actually stand on the opposite side of the doors and pull the eggs out if they want. Just in case I'm going to end up with any problems in the future, this should make things simpler. In fact, I could probably narrow that down. That might be a simpler idea. Ah. That way all the eggs end up there and anyone who wants can just grab them from either side of the door and I can wall in the top if the poke shells do become violent. Yeah, I think we've got that covered. Now, just to, just to cover that again, we, we grew, we planted uh, 60 wild arbor trees just so we could get enough wood to run eight of these uh, ethanol distilleries, which we then dump the waste ethanol, which is pretty much what we're using it for, into the petroleum generators which generates the two kilowatts of power necessary to run all of these things, plus the six gas pumps that are pumping out all of this carbon dioxide. Oh, dear Lord, that's so much carbon dioxide. Yes, all of that carbon dioxide is going up there. In fact, we could carbon skim that carbon dioxide and use it to make even more polluted dirt if we wanted to. Actually, ooh. No, not this episode, not this episode, because I've run out of time. But maybe that's a better idea. Take all that carbon dioxide, just put some carbon skimmers down the bottom of a... Uh, the industrial sauna, we could carbon skim it, turn it into polluted water, which we would then sieve to get polluted dirt. That might... Mm. Okay, I'll leave it up to the comments. At the moment, we've got the gas piping built, so I'm not sure if it's necessary. But uh, we're going to keep running this, and at the same time, uh, any early poke shells that hatch in here that we don't have time... that we don't get incubated and put into some of these ranches, I'm going to go along and wrangle manually and get them into it. I want to fill this up as quickly as possible. The sooner we ramp up and we can get as many poke shells going as possible, the sooner we can be swimming in steel. I want to build everything out of steel. I, I want it to be just a ludicrous amount of steel on this map. Yeah, well, that is uh, the start of poke shells for today. Next episode, we'll expand this out and then uh, put steel everywhere and go into space. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and uh, stay safe out there and good luck.